Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com. Before we head out to the throwing circle, just wanted to let you know that registration is open for our 2019 Overnight Throws Camp. It's going to be at Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania, yet again. We always have a lot of fun out there. This year, we're staying in a dorm that is really, really close to the throwing area. It's actually the closest air-conditioned dorm. It's a brand new dorm. Uh, single rooms, apartment style rooms that have a kitchen and a living room. Uh, good food, just like always. It's four days overnight and the price cannot be beat. So make sure you can go right down below, check out the, uh, the link, or you can click right up top and check out the link as well that just popped up. We hope to see you. There's only 70 spots available because we are limited by the size of the throwing area. So if you are planning on coming this year, make sure to click the link, check it out, and I will see you at Allegheny. It starts on Saturday, June 29th. Hope to see you there. All right, so we are on video number three of our top 10 errors and corrections on the glide shot put. Now, in the first video, we talked about staying low in the back. In the second video, we talked about pushing off of the heel and having the heel be the last part of your body touching the back of the circle. And when we talked in the last video, we said sometimes when you push off the toe, you actually stand up really, really tall. You're not able to stay low as you glide. And that's what we're talking about today. We need to talk about staying low as you glide through the circle. You need to stay low. You don't want to see popping up. We don't want to see you gliding using your head and using your upper back to get across that circle. Ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep the path of the ball, the path of the shot, smooth and efficient. You have to think of it almost like an airplane taking off the ground. You would never want to be on an airplane and look out the window and see that the runway is full of bumps and full of up and down. You want a nice, smooth runway. At the same time, you don't want to look out the window of that airplane and see that the runway is all curvy because you know the plane's never going to get up to speed. You want a nice, straight runway. You want a nice, smooth runway. That way the plane can accelerate and take off the ground. It's the same thing in the glide. We want to make sure it's smooth. We want to make sure it's efficient, just like that plane taking off the ground. Now, in order to achieve this, we need to make sure that we're keeping our back flat to the ground or as flat to the ground as it can possibly be. So in the first video, we talked about getting low and we talked about getting in the back of the circle. We talked about getting low and getting our back flat and parallel to the ground. Okay, we showed some pictures in the previous video, in that first video, of your back being flat and your back being parallel to the ground. Now what you need to do as you glide, if you've ever been to like a Costco or a Home Depot or a Lowe's or any store like that, you've seen that scaffolding, you've seen those shelves, and those shelves are typically made out of sheets of plywood, and that bottom shelf is about this tall. You want to pretend like you're gliding under one of those shelves. You want to pretend like you're trying to glide under a table. You don't want to slam your head or slam your upper back against the bottom side of that shelf. So when we're in this position, what we don't want to do is we don't want to start our glide by taking our upper back and throwing our head and throwing our back into that glide. We want to stay nice and low. We want to keep our body down and explode backwards, keeping everything nice and low and trying to stay flat to the ground. Now keep in mind, we want to work backwards as we correct our athletes. That's something we talked about in video one. So if you want to keep your weight back, if you want to stay low in the power position, if you want to stay crouched in the power position, you need to stay low in the middle of the glide and low in the beginning of the glide. Okay, think of that airplane. We don't want to start low in the back, okay? Low in the back and then be high in the middle and then get low in the power position and then up at the end. It's just not going to work. That low to up, low to up, it's turbulent, it's not smooth. So try to keep your body nice and flat and the path of that shot put should go from low 
to medium to high. And if you were to stand on the side of your athletes and watch the path of the shot, the shot should also go up in the air like that airplane taking off the runway. Now obviously this is going to be really limited by the flexibility, the mobility, and the agility, all the illities, of your thrower. So if you have a thrower who is a lot bigger, a lot heavier, has a big belly on them, then he might not be able to stay as low as someone who's more of a taller, thinner uh, built. At the same time, if you have someone who is really inflexible, really someone who is not able to get in a good position, it's going to be harder for them to stay low as they're gliding. So this is something that they're going to have to continuously work on as they continue to be one of your athletes, as they continue to work with you. This is not going to be something that's going to be fixed in just one or two days of practice. They need to continuously work on this throughout their throwing career. Now, a great way to teach your athletes how to get low and stay low in the middle is something like a broomstick drill. Now, I have this cardboard tube, which is really, really lightweight, but you can use a broomstick, PVC pipe, an old broken javelin, an old broken high jump or pull vault crossbar, whatever you have lying around. And all you're going to do is when your athlete gets set up, you're going to put this right over their back and you're gonna scare them a little bit. We want them to be a little bit afraid. So you're gonna tap them on the shoulder and say, I want you to go underneath this as you glide. And then when they get set up, you're simply gonna lift it a little bit and get it out of the way because we don't actually wanna hit our kids in the back. We don't actually wanna hit our athletes. As much as you might want to, we don't wanna hit our athletes in the back of the head. So you scare them a little bit. You say, look how low this is. You tap them on the back and say, you need to try to glide underneath this. Don't pick your head up. Don't pick your shoulders up. You're going to hit yourself right on the tube. And then when they get set up to throw, all you do is simply lift it up a little bit and have them glide right underneath it. It's going to scare them a little bit into staying low. They're going to be afraid of hitting their head, but it's going to really make sure that they are staying in a good position and that they are staying low. Remember, you're gliding under that shelf. You're gliding under a table. You don't want to pick up your back, you don't want to pick up your head, and use that to gain speed through the circle. You want to stay nice and low, back as flat as possible, as parallel to the ground as possible, as you're gliding through the circle. All right, everybody, that does it for me. Hope you've been enjoying the video series. Make sure, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Just click right over here or here, wherever it's going to be popping up on YouTube. Make sure to click subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell as well. That way you get notified when all of the new videos come out. Make sure to check out the rest of the videos in this playlist. You can do that right up there. Or if you have any questions, you can check out some of our video analysis sessions that we've done. You can check that out right down there. All right, so make sure everybody check those out, click those links, it's all free. And if you're interested in coming to our overnight camp, the spots are filling up. We already have 10 people signed up and there's only 70 available spots and it's not even February 1st yet. So click the link below, get signed up. We wanna see you in Allegheny. We can help you out. We've helped out hundreds of throwers over the years to hit more PRs the first day of practice. We wanna help you too. All right, so click the links, get signed up, subscribe, notifications, like it, share it, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you next week for our next video.